Hello, I'm Kim Miles, founder and CEO of Miles and Heels Productions. I'm a powerhouse problem solver, motivational writer, humorist, and self-professed shoe addict. I am honored to be here giving my TED Talk today entitled, I Survived the Big C, Conformity. I bet you thought I was going to say cancer, didn't you? Or maybe you thought I was going to say COVID. Well, I have news for you. I have survived all three. Fun fact, this TED Talk is happening exactly four weeks after I was diagnosed with COVID. COVID, of course, is the second C word for today. When I was originally selected to do this talk back in February of 2020, COVID was an unfamiliar acronym that was referring to something that was happening all the way across the globe in an isolated area. Here in the U.S., we were weeks away from that acronym dominating our news cycle. Last year, the TEDx theme for Babson College was bridging the gap. However, in light of COVID and how it has irrevocably altered all manner of living, it's only fitting to alter the theme to include ideas that also break the norm. COVID will forever be known as the life-altering circumstance that challenged any and all sense of normalcy. Just for fun, I actually Googled, when will we get back to normal? Not surprisingly, 2 billion 540 million search results appeared relating to COVID. Which begs the question, what is normal anyway? Time will forever now be known as pre-COVID and post-COVID. And life during COVID has taught us endless lessons. We've had to bridge the gap and break the norm in our thinking in everything from education to transportation from hairdressing to healthcare, from food service to fire pit gatherings. There is nothing that hasn't been affected, altered, or adjusted. The biggest buzzwords over the past year have been pivot and unprecedented. We've all been forced to reassess how we approach our daily lives, but I'd actually like to take a step back before it was cool to pivot and necessary to pivot, long before the word Zoom was a verb, a noun, and a necessity. It's how I came to be standing here today giving you this talk, and it's how I became a survivor of the big C word, conformity. You see, if you told me eight years ago that I would be standing here giving a TED Talk, I would have laughed. I mean, eight years ago, I hadn't even thought of becoming an entrepreneur. As a matter of fact, I'm actually a financial advisor by trade, and even that is a far cry from what I ever thought I was going to be when I grew up. This is exactly the point of my story, of how I bridged the gap of all my many life experiences, broke the idea of what is considered the norm, and learned to embrace and love the version of my life that I've chosen to lead. Now, while I am certain that there are endless versions of how to lead a life, I'm probably not that different from many women that I know in the respect that I personally always envisioned growing up, utilizing my degree, getting married, and having a family. And wonderfully today, that journey comes in all versions, shapes, sizes, flavors, colors, nationalities, creeds, preferences, you name it. However, I graduated with a degree in television, radio, and film production from the SI Newhouse School of Public Communications at Syracuse University, which is arguably the best communications school in the country. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Love you very much for that. My final exams were producing CDs. Now, I don't know if all of you understand what CDs are. I know I just dated myself there, but I also had final exams that had to do with writing television scripts. As a matter of fact, I'm actually a proud recipient of a Scooney Award. A Scooney Award is the equivalent in Newhouse of an Emmy Award. You see, all I wanted to do was I wanted to work in sports package production. Let me explain what that is. You know when you watch the Olympics or you're watching a championship game uh, during any sporting event and then this great human interest story comes on and you're crying your eyes out and you go through a whole box of tissues? That was my dream job. I wanted to produce those stories. Fast forward to after graduation, I moved to New York City where I held several menial jobs in my desired field of television only to actually become rather disenchanted with the entire industry. I found it slightly disingenuous, and it had a dark underbelly, which ran very counterintuitive to who I am as a person. Luckily, a friend of mine saw something in me that I never did. 
she suggested that I try my hand at technology sales. Now, not that she thought I was some technology whiz, because believe you me, I am not. But she knew that I was great with people. And we all know that people buy from people that they love. It turns out that she was absolutely right. I enjoyed a hugely successful career in technology sales at the height of the dot-com boom and its subsequent bust. After almost 10 years of selling technology solutions in Manhattan, I found myself unemployed for the first time in life. But in a strange twist of events, I was unemployed by my own architecture. You see, I had wanted to leave New York after 9-11. And when my company was downsizing, I offered to be laid off so that I could relocate back to Boston with my then boyfriend, now husband. I'll never forget how conflicted I felt because, you see, I had engineered this state of unemployment, but I was totally freaked out that I didn't have a job for the first time in my adult life. My fiance, because he's such a smart guy, he told me to take a breath and take some time to explore new options. After all, we were on the verge of getting married. He had a job. I had some severance pay. We could afford to just take a beat. And that's when it happened. My father called me up one day and he said, you know, Kim, I was just speaking to one of my clients who used to be an accountant and he now works for a large life insurance company. So while you're considering your next move, why don't you just have a cup of coffee with him and have a conversation, hear about his story. What have you got to lose? <laughs> life insurance, I said to my father, incredulously. I said, dad, <laughs> I'm your only daughter. Do you even know me? I mean, I have a Scooney Award, for goodness sake. Well, I stand before you here today, 19 years after that conversation and that cup of coffee, as a proud financial advisor who truly loves what she does and how she helps her clients. You see, by opening myself up and my mind up enough to have that single cup of coffee and a conversation and try my hand at something that I had absolutely no experience in, well, what I actually did was I opened myself up to breaking out of the norm of what I thought my career trajectory was supposed to look like. It's this professional step that served as the foundation for where my ultimate trajectory was meant to take me. This is where the saga actually begins. Because as it turns out, that leap of faith was pivotal because running my own financial practice laid the groundwork and prompted my confidence to enable me to launch my production company eight years ago, Miles in Heels Productions. It was because of that professional foundation that I was able to confidently return to my roots of creativity and production and writing and content creation and harness a new fueled passion for female entrepreneurship. I had both the mojo and the business skills to follow a new direction that I never would have even considered before. And that has been groundbreaking for both me and my clients. But there is one part of my journey and it's become so central to my story that has absolutely nothing to do with degrees or jobs or even cups of coffee. As you may recall at the top of my story, I told you that I envisioned having a family. Well, as it turns out, life had entirely different plans for me. Shortly after I got married, I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. This, of course, is the third of the big C words we're talking about today. I'm a very lucky survivor, and I'm very grateful, not without a few minor scars, of course. But the one thing that people may not realize is that while you're going through treatment, doctors really ask that you don't get pregnant. And while that may seem like the furthest thing from your mind while you're not feeling well, Time has a way of creeping up on you. And for me, when I finally was feeling well and I was ready to have a family, I was then much older and things became much more complicated. According to a Forbes article from May of 2020 about millennial women who are delaying having children because of their careers, the Department of Health and Human Services actually reports that 12 to 13% of all couples struggle with fertility. Well, I guess that is just another club to which I belong. I mean, after two unsuccessful IVF attempts, I did get pregnant on my third try, but unfortunately, it ended before things ever really got started, and it was fraught with a whole host of tough complications. You see, in the first chapter of our marriage, my husband and I were dealing with my thyroid cancer diagnosis, and then a 
my fertility struggles. And instead of living our lives embroiled in yet another medical chapter, we decided we just wanted to enjoy each other and we wanted to enjoy our marriage. And we chose to be child free. Hence the fourth C word, child free by choice. Now notice I said child free and not childless. That is deliberate. Childless implies somehow that, that I am less than the next woman because I don't have children. I am not less than because I don't have children. My heart and my life are just as full as the next woman. Some may argue fuller. Don't get me wrong. I kick off my heels to all the mothers out there holding it down with both families and careers. But I am just not so certain that I would have been able to make the same bold choices that I've made or had the same opportunities that I've had if I had a family. I run two very successful businesses and I have a very full life full of friends and family and hobbies. And you know what? There is nothing wrong with that. Oh, you'd be amazed at the reactions that I get from other women when asked what seems like innocuous questions. These questions often come in presumptuous forms, such as how many children do you have? Or where do our children know each other from? Well, when I answer I don't have any children, I'm usually met with one of three faces. There's the, holy crap, what conversation did I just walk into? That's always a fun one. Then there's the, um, you have no kids, you might as well have three heads. <laughs> and then of course there's my personal favorite, I have to go, I, I have absolutely nothing to talk to you about. Oh, but those are not the right questions to be asking each other. Why is it that one assumes that children are always a part of the equation or even marriage? In a poll conducted by the New York Times in 2018, it was reported that of adults aged 20 to 45, 36% of them said that they didn't want children or were unsure. 34% of them said that they hadn't found a partner. 31% said that they couldn't afford childcare, and 30% said that they did not want to have children at all. You see, different people have entirely different definitions of what their normal looks like. When it comes to family or career or marriage, how about learning about a person as a whole before jumping to conclusions about another female? Conclusion, yet another C word. I don't know your backstory and you don't know mine. Let's get to know each other before we pull the judgment card, shall we? Let's not project each other's norms onto one another, but rather let's listen to each other. Let's learn from one another about all the various variations of this thing called life. Embracing the pivot, bridging the gap, breaking the norm, having that cup of coffee, that's the secret recipe to a happy life. I want students, people everywhere, but especially women, to understand that their path in life is not always glaringly obvious. It's not always presented in a nice, neat little package. It's often full of missteps and wrong turns and gigantic leaps of faith. Gigantic leaps of faith and meeting lots of people for gigantic cups of coffee. Believing in yourself and taking those leaps of faith are sometimes even more important than all the calculated decisions we make along the way. If you take one thing away from my talk today, please, please have it be this. Bridging the gap between our perceived projected future self and our actual present day self is an act of self-love and acceptance. Just because I'm a woman, it doesn't mean that my past should be predetermined for me. It doesn't mean that I should be expected to have children, biological or not. That decision is mine and mine alone, and I should never be judged for whatever decision I made. I hereby release myself of having to justify my choices to make others feel comfortable, and I implore you to do the very same. That big C word, conformity, Conformity has everything to do with social standards and attitudes and practices. It follows comfortable norms and compliance. We are the only ones who can define what our new normal is and should be. And if we haven't learned how to adjust to what a new normal looks like in this day of COVID, then I'm not really sure what we've learned. So I challenge you here today, write your own script, live your own unique version of your life and define it for yourself and yourself alone. 
Play by your own rules and nip conformity in the bud and become a survivor of that biggest C word of all. Let's start to champion our own choices and have the only C word worth using be that of celebration of each other. Thank you.